Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. Today we're taking a look at a replica of the Rheinmetall Volksturm Carbine. This was one of a number of simple utilitarian firearms developed to arm the Volkssturm, Germany's last ditch militia. The Volkssturm, or People's Storm, was formed in October 1944 as Nazi Germany's position became increasingly untenable. By spring 1945, the Soviet advance from the east was rapidly nearing Berlin, and the Allies in the west had already crossed the Rhine. The Volkssturm were formed in a last ditch effort to slow down the Allied advance. Theoretically made up of all men aged between 13 and 70, they were to be given a Volkssturm armband, some cursory weapons training, and then sent into the line. By late 1944, Germany was struggling to equip its regular army, let alone a new militia. To arm the Volkssturm, all the weapons were reissued, along with a large variety of foreign captured weapons. In addition to this, the primitive Waffen program was launched. Germany's industrial capacity had been shattered by Allied bombing, its transport networks broken, and workforce demoralised. Despite this, arms manufacturers were directed to submit prototypes of simple, cheap weapons that could be mass-produced quickly, with minimal tooling. This spawned a number of prototypes with varying degrees of sophistication. The so-called Volkskaver, or people's guns. Perhaps the best known of these was the Gustloff Volkssturmgewehr, or MP507, often referred to as the VG15. A semi-automatic, delayed blowback operated carbine, it was chambered in Germany's new intermediate 7.92 by 33mm round, also known as 7.92 Kurs. This and other Volkstone weapons will hopefully be the topic of future videos. Today, however, we're going to take a look at other guns chambered in 7.92 Kurs, the Volkstone's bolt action carbines. Five manufacturers, including Ermawerk, Mauser, and Rheinmetall, all submitted bolt action rifles chambered in the Kurs round. Rheinmetall actually developed two rifles a simplified conventional bolt action, which became the VG45, or later referred to as the VG3, and another rifle with a stamped receiver. Here we're looking at a reproduction of the stamped prototype. It had a welded two piece stamped receiver with spot welded inserts that formed the magazine housing. It has a simple two lug bolt and a two piece wooden stock. The VG45, which had been completed first, was submitted for testing in December 1944. Reportedly it performed well during testing, firing some 2000 rounds and 20 rifle grenades successfully without any major malfunctions. Sadly there are no surviving photos of the original stamped prototype. So today we're taking a look at a reproduction built by Range Facilities Burnham using information gleaned from contemporary Allied reports. Let's take a closer look at the rifle. The prototype used a simple two lug rotating bolt action which was cocked on opening. The bolt handle was straight rather than turned down like the K98Ks. The shorter 7.92 cares round gives the bolt a shorter length of travel. Here we can see the bolt's two locking lugs, and the locking lug recesses into which they lock. The carbine weighed just over 6.5 pounds, or 2.95 kilograms. It had a simple fixed rear notch sight and an unprotected front post. The carbine had an overall length of 34 inches or 86 centimeters and a simple two piece wooden stock which riveted onto the receiver. Unlike the VG45, the original stamped prototype had a safety lever on the left side of the receiver. This acted on the trigger sear to prevent it from being depressed. The replica, however, has a simple trigger blocking safety. The 
The carbine can feed from 10 round or 30 round Sturmgewehr magazines. The magazine release is a simple push button on the left hand side of the receiver. Here we can see a replica 10 round magazine. The original 10 round experimental magazines were reportedly developed to make test firing easier. There is some debate surrounding whether any similar 10 round magazines made it into the field. It doesn't appear that they entered mass production. Here we can see the carbine's stamped trigger guard, magazine housing, and the welds that hold the two pieces of the stamped receiver together. While the reproduction takes some necessary liberties with its construction and receiver shape, as well as its alternative safety and markings, I believe my experience with the reproduction is representative of how the original Rheinmetall carbine and the other primitive Waffen 7.92 Kurz carbines might have handled. The softer shooting 7.92 Kurz round certainly would have made sense for a rifle design to be issued to poorly trained militia units made up of old men and young boys. Okay, let's take a look at the rifle in action. As you'd expect at around 35 inches long, the rifle is very handy. And while the basic rear sight necessitated some Kentucky windage, within the course of firing a single 10 round magazine, it was easy to bring the rifle onto a man sized target around 70 meters away. The carbine has a simple trigger mechanism and this results in a fair amount of travel, but I've certainly shot worse. While the replica's bolt was a little stiff, this is probably representative of how the original would have handled. You can see more of the rifle in action, along with some slow motion footage, in our live fire video, linked here. While several of the other Volkskaver entered limited production, the war ended before serial production of either of the Rheinmetall carbines could begin, and it is unlikely that the stamped prototype was officially tested, and probably only one of two of these were produced before the end of the war. However, the various 7.92 Kurs, Volkssturm carbines, and the other primitive Waffen remain important examples of the desperate measures that Nazi Germany was forced to resort to at the end of the war. My special thanks to my friend Chuck over at Gunlab for helping with this episode. And as always guys, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.